Hey, you guys finally made it. I was searching for hours. Still didn't see any sign of those three, so uh, I decided to come back. How about you? Find anything? Uh, it's kind of hard to explain. Hmm, I see. So you came up empty-handed, too. Well, it doesn't matter. I already came up with a new plan. Huh? What plan? Shinobu told me a saying after she got back from studying in Liyue. It went something like, uh, the something by day becomes, uh, something by night? Yeah, that's what I said. Come on, keep up. Anyway, I was so focused on scaring people last round that those three dressed up as ghosts caught me completely off guard. But not this time! Oh no, I'll be hiding nearby and waiting for those three to emerge first, and then I'll nail him with a surprise attack! You two just gotta keep playing it natural and join the contest, got it? Okay, see you later. Wait, Ito! Uh, he ran off again. Well, his plan does make some sense, at least. <sighs> Let's go talk to the Shrine Maiden so we can join the second round. Congratulations on winning the first round of the Test of Courage! Now you're one step closer to the dark, messy truth. But is that really a good thing? Ooh. Hey! Cut the nonsense! What we just saw was super terrifying! Oh, really? Good to hear. Hearing the word super terrifying is exactly what all us event organizers would like to hear. Something mysterious is also happening here, not just the event! So what? You've heard the stories about the Test of Courage, haven't you? Everyone who participates in the event faces a variety of emotions. People are afraid of seeing their innermost fears appear before them, and yet they still seek the thrill of experiencing those fears. So, isn't it natural for us to have things in the dark and deathly silent forest to help fulfill that experience? Just like the grinning monster standing behind you right now, waiting for you to turn around! Ah, really? <laughs> I knew a little trick like that wouldn't be enough to scare you off. So, congrats on passing this test. The second round of the Test of Courage will begin shortly. Have you found your partner yet? Huh? But don't we already have a partner from the last round? Yes, your team's outstanding efforts certainly won you the last round. So it's understandable that you'd want to pair up with your previous partner. But unfortunately, you must find a different partner for each round of the event. If you don't have a partner by the time the next round begins, then... Yeah, yeah, Paimon already knows! If we don't have a partner in time, then we'll be disqualified. <sighs> Let's ask around and see if there's anyone looking for a partner. Traveler, Paimon, I had a feeling you two would be here. also here for the first round, but I arrived a little early, so maybe that's why I didn't see you. By the way, I heard you were the winners. Impressive. I eventually found the hidden dongle milk too, but it was already too late. 
<laughs> Actually, Paimon still doesn't know how we managed to find it. Paimon was just hiding behind him the whole time, and somehow we won! Traveler, you never told me you were so good at this sort of event. You were keeping it a secret, were you? Anyway, would you like to pair up with me? We'd be an amazing team! With us working together, the second round will be a piece of cake. You'll see that being on my team is a blast! Now let's get out there and win this thing! We'll move faster than a firework shooting straight into the sky! It'll be like whoosh! And the round will be ours! You appear to have found a partner. Let's see if you can repeat your luck from the first round. Though, whether winning should be considered good luck or not is debatable. <laughs> anyway, I will now reveal the item you'll be searching for in the second round of the Test of Courage. It's a fan. A fan? You mean like the thing we use to keep cool when it's hot out? Correct. The fan was personally selected by the Yashiro Commissioner himself and has been placed somewhere in the Chinju Forest. There will be signs to guide the way, but beware. The darkness that lurks in the forest is drawing nearer. <laughs> Remember, if you can't go on any further, you can always give up and live to see another day. We'll never give up! Let's go. We can't let anyone beat us to it. Come in real handy for the next Onikabuto tournament. That's strange. How did Paimon transform into a lavender melon? somewhere else? Uh, are you tired, Paimon? Do you want to take a break? <laughs> you appear to have found, though, whether anyway, it's... A fan? Correct. There will be some... <laughs> from the looks of it. I'll hold on to them. <laughs> They'll come in real handy for the next Onikabuto tournament.
strange. How did Paimon transform into a lavender melon? Hey, Paimon's over here! That doesn't even look like Paimon! Hmm? So, what in the world is this? Hey, it's flying away! Don't go! Let me have a look at ya! Far enough. Are you tired, Paimon? Do you want to take a break? Yes, please. Oh, let's rest here. Uh, huh? Wait a minute. Was that statue always facing this way? Ah, the candles also went out. What's going on? Is something coming? Oh, let's get out of here. Oh, Paimon wasn't kidding. The statue really did move. Wonder how that works. Here. It's so beautiful. Uh, but now that I look closer, it seems like the lanterns are floating in midair. How is that possible? Uh, that's definitely not normal. Hey, can I borrow your shoulders for a second? You can give me a boost and I'll pull one of them down. Look what we have here. Isn't this the fan we're looking for? Wow, it has such a beautiful design on it. Are those fireworks? It seems to be for some sort of festival. So, now that we've found this fan, does that mean we've won the second round of the Test of Courage? Let's bring it back. Whew. Thank goodness it's over. Hmm. Wonder if Ito's still out trying to capture those three from earlier. Paimon's a little worried about him. Uh, why don't we have a look around? Hmm? Is there something else you need to take care of? How about I take the fan back then? Thank you. That would help. No need to thank me. It's been a blast doing the Test of Courage with you guys. I'd love to do it again. <laughs> I've got you now. Ah! Just run! Don't worry about me! Ha! Don't underestimate this, Oni. None of you are getting away today. Hey! Wow, Ito, you really captured them! Seriously, why didn't you run when I told you? What are you saying? We couldn't abandon you? Yeah, that's right. So just get on with it. If you're gonna eat us, then you'll have to deal with all three of us. We won't back down, even if... Uh, even if we're already in your stomach. Who said we were going to eat you? Wait, are you the ghost of something tasty? Uh, and Ito, why are you so quiet all of a sudden? Hmm, I have a weird feeling that I've seen these three somewhere before. Oh, I know! These are all creatures from the Ultimate Yokai Field Guide that Granny used to show me. There's Yoko, Kappa, and Hitotsume Kozo. They're all Yokai! It sure took you long enough to notice. Well, we recognized you right away. You're an Oni, aren't you? According to legends, Oni are grouchy, extremely strong, and crush other yokai into balls to eat them up. Oh, pff, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Who came up with that? Besides, you're the ones people are scared of, hiding behind bushes and scaring people off the road. What are you trying to do here? Don't think I didn't see you, following him around and conjuring up all sorts of weird, scary stuff. Aha! So it was you three! No, we weren't trying to scare anyone. We were just trying to... Uh... Um... Uh... 
Really? You're not... mad? Even though you scared the daylights out of Paimon a few times, it doesn't seem like you were doing it on purpose. Anyway, let's hear your side of the story, and Paimon will decide whether or not to forgive you. Um... well, the truth is, we were planning a festival. One hosted by the yokai. The humans are also welcome to attend. Ah! The festival that A mentioned! Mikawa Flower Festival. Huh, that does ring a bell. Oh, right, it used to be hosted by the top yokai. I heard it was supposed to be a lot of fun. I mean, not as fun as my almighty Arataki Great and Glorious Drum Along Festival, but still. Yes, the Mikawa Flower Festival is our aspiration. But we know that our festival doesn't deserve that name. The times of Yakiyako are long gone. We're just a bunch of little yokai living in the wilderness. As you can see, we lack the necessary yokai powers to put on such a grand festival. But we're determined to still reach out to humans and express our gratitude. Huh? Gratitude? What do you mean? Mm-hmm. You see, we live in the wilderness and are frequently attacked by monsters. They would come and stir up trouble on our land, forcing us to hand over our food. Sometimes, they would even get rough and leave us injured. But later, many human adventurers came into the wilderness and drove off the monsters, allowing us to live in peace. Ah, I get it now. You want to repay the favor, but, uh, your powers are too puny. Hey, don't let it get to ya. You might be a bunch of pipsqueaks, but you're all solid yokai in my book. So, are you the ones who set up the Akitsu Yugen game on the beach? Yep, that was us. Have you tried it yet? Isn't it fun? We drew inspiration from the legendary Akitsu Hazura. It took a lot of yokai power to set it up. After that, we didn't have much yokai power left, so we set up some stalls in the forest to add to the festival atmosphere. We were just following you to see your reactions. Is the Akitsu Yugen really that important? Why did you spend all of your yokai power to build it? Paimon would have taken the Traveler for a big meal if you had set up more food stalls. Really? To be honest, we've never met a human before, so we had no idea what you would like. We focused on building the Akitsu Yugen because of a legend we heard. Ah, I know the one. It's the story of yokai meeting a human during a festival hundreds of years ago. It's said that long ago, a human samurai once stumbled across the Mikawa Flower Festival. Huh? What's a human doing here? We erected the barrier, didn't we? Ah, oh, what a pain. The yokai at the festival began discussing how to drive away the human. Huh? When suddenly, they heard a voice. Oh. Oh. Ah. This is our festival. And the point is to have fun. What difference does it make if a human joins us yokai? <laughs> the speaker appeared to be a prominent figure among the yokai. And when he spoke, the other yokai fell silent. You there, young man. Do you drink sake? Uh, yes, I do. Ha! Then join us! We can enjoy tonight's festivities together! <laughs> and so, the yokai and samurai celebrated together. The two competed in the highlight of the festival, the Akitsu Hazara. Their spectacular game ended in a draw, and a new friendship was forged. <laughs> I can't believe a human could keep up with me! Witnessing the dynamic powers of the yokai will certainly help hone my swordsmanship. You're a swordsman? Oh, yes. I'm currently traveling the world in search of formidable opponents. Then let's make a deal. We meet for a duel every ten years. What do you say? Hmm. I look forward to it. The Mikawa Flower Festival is meant to bring happiness to all who attend, and Akitsu Hazara is a symbol of friendship. That's why, when we decided to hold the festival here, setting up Akitsu Hazara was our first priority. Unfortunately, the real Akitsu Hazara has been lost to time. 
What we created is a version of the game we heard about from a wandering merchant, so we changed the name to Akitsu Yugen. Yeah, but that wasn't us. We have no idea what could have gone wrong. We closed Akitsu Yugen a while ago and carefully checked it for any issues. But we didn't find anything wrong with it. Maybe it was just some strange mishap caused by our unstable yokai power at the time. Hmm. They don't look like they're lying. And believe me, I know a liar when I see one. Maybe it really was just an accident. After that incident, people stopped coming to the attraction. Later, a human man with blue hair appeared and walked around the area. He had a piercing gaze. I almost felt like he could see us. But then he turned and quickly left without saying anything. It wasn't long before large numbers of people began coming to the Chinju Forest. And visitors were playing Akitsu Yugen again. It was wonderful. A human man with blue hair? Now that you mention it, the fan that Ayato chose is the same kind that's used at a festival. Do you think that he knew about the yokai when he decided to hold the test of courage here? Oh, so my bro Ayato is here for the test of courage too? Or maybe he's here to catch Oni Kabuto! Ha! Had I known that, I would have brought the one I caught a few days ago to battle him! Wow! Ito's still clueless about who Ayato really is! Well anyway, seems like all the strange things we saw earlier were caused by these little yokai, not ghosts! Huh, what a relief! And now that we know what's happening, the test of courage doesn't seem that scary after all! Hey, you want to hang out with humans, right? I totally get that. After all, we yokai are becoming a rare breed these days. If all we do is isolate, we'll only feel more lonely. So why don't you let this Oni do you a favor, hmm? See, I'm a yokai too, right? And I'm already a natural in human society. I bet there's not a single person in Inazuma who hasn't heard of Arataki, the one and only Ito. <laughs> Come on, let's go. I'll show you around. Now that Paimon doesn't feel so scared anymore, maybe we can walk around the area. The yokai said they wanted to host a festival, but Paimon was too busy having the bejeebers scared out of her to pay any attention until now. Come to think of it, Paima remembers seeing some festival-related items on the beach. Let's head over there and take a look. Maybe we can help out. You two again. I have to say I'm impressed by your willingness to approach me after last time. You're much braver than I thought. But I'm not going to let you off the hook so easily this time. If you don't leave, I'll... Hmm. Nice try, but you don't scare us anymore. We just met your fellow yokai and they told us everything. Huh? Fellow yokai. That's right. You're another little yokai who lives in the wilderness, aren't you? We just met Yoko, Kappa, and Hitotsume Kozo. So which type of yokai are you, hmm? Oh, let Paimon guess. Uh... Hmm... Actually, Paimon has no idea what you are. Anyway, it doesn't matter. We're on our way to play Akitsu Yugen. Care to join us? Akitsu Yugen. Again, that game. How could this be happening now? 
All I needed was a little more time, and I could... Huh? What's the matter? Are you not feeling well? Oh, maybe you're hungry, or maybe you didn't sleep well. You look pretty exhausted. Don't worry, Ito has already taken your fellow yokai to meet some new friends. Everyone will get along just fine. Yeah, so there's no need to worry. Come on, let's go play at Kitsuyugen. We'll see who can finish the game the quickest. The loser will have to grant the winner a wish. Oh, it's starting! Get ready. Okay, watch and learn. No way! She hit every cube in one shot and finished even faster than you, Traveler! Oh, Paimon's head is spinning after watching that! Did you see how she did it? Even if the rules have changed a little, I would never lose to amateurs like you. Oh, right. You're a yokai. You're the ones who created Akitsu Yugen. No wonder you're so good. Anyway, we'll keep our word. You can make a wish now. But before you say anything, we won't do anything that's clearly impossible or harmful to others. A wish, huh? Then I wish... ...that we never cross paths again. Wait... what? But... didn't we just have a great time together? That's precisely why. Don't ever come near me, or speak to me again. Surely that's a wish you can fulfill, right? This is my final word of warning. If I ever see your faces again, I will... I'll steal your souls! Scared now? Good! Then don't come here again! Uh... Paimon doesn't get it. Did 
we do something wrong? Oh, fair enough. But Paimon had a lot of fun playing Akitsu Yugen with her. It would be great if we could see her again. Anyway, let's go see how Ito's doing. You must be Hitatsume Kozo. Y yeah <laughs> No need to be nervous. I'm Yuimiya, and I run Naganohara Fireworks. Oh, I once saw some Naganohara Fireworks. Even though I was watching from a distance, they were still so beautiful, bursting across the sky. Really? Then the next time we meet, I'll bring some fireworks for us to launch together. It'll be fun. Whoa, really? Thank you very much. And if I may ask, are you Lord Kaedehara Kazuha? Yes, that's me. But I'm afraid that I'm no lord, just a wandering samurai. I've seen you with your sword in the wilderness. You made quick work of many opponents with your amazing swordsmanship. Ah, uh, that must have been when I was trying to escape Inazuma. It wasn't as impressive as you make it seem. I had to face many trying situations before I was able to leave the islands. The head of the Kamisato clan also lent me his assistance at the time. By the way, this is his sister. Oh, so y you must be the one and only Shirasagi Himegimi. What an honor. There's no need to be so formal. I never imagined I'd ever meet someone as distinguished as you. I must be dreaming. Hey, don't you want to go talk to them too? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm rather shy. Really? That's strange. You seemed completely fine when we were chatting. I'm not sure why. But I feel so relaxed when talking with you, General Goro. Actually, I'm the most timid of the three of us. I hid for days the last time someone tossed a stone into the river. <laughs> ah, sorry for rambling on. It's odd. I'm not normally like this. It's okay. You can't excel at everything. The important thing is to have the courage to change. Hey there. <laughs> Chatting away, I see. Mind if I join you? I've never seen a kappa before. Hello there. Thank you for bringing so many amazing people to meet us, Ito. Ah, <laughs> it's nothing. Being the one and only means being the best, you know? Oh, I should mention that uh, I even have my own gang, and every member has a special title. Classic Ito. There you go, bragging about yourself again. Don't confuse them. Everyone's here for the test of courage, not because you brought them here. Half the people here don't even know who you are. Hey, this is my moment, Paimon. Don't ruin it for me. <laughs> Ito really isn't as cool as he claims to be. When it comes to having connections in Inazuma, nobody can beat Paimon and the Traveler. Oh, yeah? All right. 
Well, then let's have a little contest and see who knows the most people. Sure, bring it on, Bull Checker Beetle Boy. Um, uh, please don't fight. Actually, I think you're both really amazing. And you also have a great friendship, just like Lord Kamai and the Samurai. <laughs> well, of course. Boss! Oh, it's the boys! Ah, darn it. I was so caught up with the yokai that I forgot I was supposed to scare the daylights out of the gang. Boss! <clears throat> uh, hey, fellas. Look, I can explain. I... Boss! Boss. We're, We're sorry. sorry! Wait, what now? We shouldn't have ever doubted you, boss. You were right. Yeah, the test of courage is terrifying. There are definitely ghosts here. I still get shivers just thinking about it. But the thrill was kind of fun. Oh, uh... <laughs> well, I told you it would be an exhilarating experience, but no, none of you believed me. Anyway, no need to be too scared now. Let me tell you what's happening here. It turns out there aren't any ghosts here. All the scary stuff you saw was just a little misunderstanding we had with the yokai. Right? Ah, uh, sorry, but I've never seen these three before. I'm not sure where you've been or what you've seen, but I don't think it had anything to do with us. Huh? Huh? Wait, hold on, little Yoko. You're kidding, right? Wait, you know, now's not really the time for that. No, I'm serious. I really don't know what's going on. But if it wasn't you guys, does that mean there are real ghosts out here? Oh, that's right. Paimon assumed she was a yokai, too. And we even played a Kitsuyukin with her! Uh... I... I'm not sure who it was you met. But we're the only three yokai who wanted to hold a festival here. Calm down. Everyone j just calm down now. What's all the noise about? Oh, you're the Tenryo Commission's... Hazel! There's nothing to fear. Even if there really is a ghost, all your noise would drive it away. Ito, you and your gang should go and inform the other contestants about the situation. Traveler, Paimon, please come with me. Oh, okay. <sighs> Paimon somehow feels a little better now that Hazo's here. The Shrine Maiden appears to be urging us to finish the third round of the Test of Courage. But where did she go? <gasps> Has she been taken away by a ghost? Will Paima be next? <gasps> Paima will never leave your side now! The words are scribbled hastily, but there's no evidence of a struggle. However, aren't there too many words written here? 
I believe that the three items chosen for this three-round contest were each selected by the three organizing parties. The Dongo Milk was chosen by the merchant who funded the event, and the fan was chosen by the Yashiro Commission, which provided the staff. So, does the Hagoita, which should have been chosen by the Grand Narukami Shrine, have any unique significance? Let's worry about that later. The bigger question is, are we really going to join the third round of the Test of Courage? Paimon would love to win the grand prize, but our safety comes first! How about we... make a tactical retreat? I still have my commission to complete, so I'll stay. Fear arises from mystery, and it's a detective's job to unearth the truth from the mystery. <sighs> Paimon somehow feels a little better after hearing you say that. Okay then, let's wait for a while. Maybe the Shrine Maiden had something to take care of and we'll be back soon. Traveler, Paimon, please let me be your partner for the final round of the Test of Courage. I'd like your assistance with this investigation, since you two are the only ones who have seen the alleged ghost. That's fine with Paimon. What do you think, Traveler? I have a few theories, but we don't have enough leads yet. There are some places I'd like to investigate first, so you two can accompany me. Sure. Where would you like to start? I want to go back to where we first met up. According to your accounts, you encountered the ghost there and passed out. I believe there may still be some clues there. Uh, do we really have to go there? What if we're walking into a trap? Are you worried that she'll be waiting for us? If anything, that would make things easier. My worry is that we won't be able to find her. Honestly, it'd save me a lot of trouble if she were to show up on her own. Wow, Hazel! You're fearless! The more cases you see, the less afraid you become. Let's go. This should be approximately where you first encountered the ghost. Of course, we cannot conclude whether the woman is actually a ghost or not at this point, but I'd like to go over everything that happened again. Do you recall anything she said at the time? Hmm, let Paimon think. She warned us not to go near her, and she said if we didn't leave, our souls would become trapped here. Remember that moment? Paima 
been shivering just thinking about it. And then what happened? Then everything seemed to get darker, and Paimon started to feel dizzy. There were ghostly flames flickering all around, and Paimon saw some sort of black mist surrounding the ghost, and then Paimon passed out. Hmm. Based on your account, it does really seem like you've seen a ghost. Exactly! So are you convinced it was a ghost now? It's possible, but I'm more interested in what she's actually trying to achieve than what she is. Even if she is a ghost, as long as she possesses some sense of reason, then there must be some purpose behind her actions. Wasn't she after our souls? She said that herself. I think she was just trying to scare you. Oh, you think so? Think about it. If I had the ability to take your souls, then why go to the trouble of warning you over and over again? Besides, a ghost wouldn't have allowed you to walk away knowing about the secret of its powers. Hmm, that does make sense. Huh, why didn't Paimon think of that? I believe there are only two possibilities. The first is that she wanted to reap your souls, but there was some condition that had to be met. You know, like what we usually call a curse. But if you had really been cursed, then you would probably have noticed it by now. So, this is the less likely scenario. I believe she was just trying to scare you away. But why would she want to scare us away? Mm. Oh, Paimon knows! Maybe she was trying to get us to quit so she could claim the Test of Courage prizes! Oh! Hmm. Probably not. So why does she want to scare us? Do you have any ideas, Hazel? Based solely on your account, I don't believe she actually meant any harm. She just didn't want you to stay here. But this evidence alone is insufficient to make any valid assumptions. She could very well be guarding some treasure or covering up a crime. Though, my intuition is telling me that neither of these hypotheses are correct. Let's continue investigating the surrounding area. Have you found any leads yet? Yeah, some tree branches seem like they were bent by something, but that's about it. I see. After you left, I took a good look around the area. Aside from the bent branches, there are burn marks in some places, but that doesn't really tell us much. If only there was some more conclusive evidence. Excuse me. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Oh, it's you guys! What are you all doing here? We heard you were out searching for clues, and we wanted to help. Oh, that's really brave of you. Uh, actually, we're also really unsure about what's happening here. We just asked the members of Mr. Ito's gang about what happened to them, and it sounded really scary. That lady is either a nasty evil spirit, or a formidable yokai. Either way, it's not good. B -b but we still want to hold the Mikawa Flower Festival. Uh-huh. We long admired the friendship between Lord Kamai and the Samurai. Which is why we want to hold the Mikawa Flower Festival, to return the favor we once received from the humans. Even though our powers are limited, we don't want this bond of friendship to vanish. The Mikawa Flower Festival is meant to be enjoyable for everyone. The Chinju Forest covers a large area, so it'd be great to have more help in the investigation. Welcome to the team. Let's all do our best to figure out what's going on. Don't worry, we're very familiar with the area. We won't miss any clues.
Huh? What is it? Is it a scrap of black cloth? Hmm, I've never seen fabric like this before. <sighs> this is a piece of shade cloth. Shade cloth? Yeah. It can effectively block out light and is used in a variety of settings, including stage performances. There's a rough tear in the cloth, probably caused by a sharp stone, or maybe some branches. Branches? Suppose that a large shade cloth was originally hung from a tree, bending the branches. When the shade cloth was removed from the tree, perhaps one of the corners caught and the branches ripped it, causing a small piece of black cloth to fall into the river. Either she didn't care, or she was in too great a hurry. Perhaps she had other things to handle at the time. But why would she hang shade cloth in the trees? I'm only speculating, but... Maybe she used it to create the atmosphere you experienced. Let's not worry about that for now. There are still many variables I haven't deduced yet. Next, I'd like to investigate the place where the Arataki gang encountered her. Do you know how to get there? Oh, I know the way! I asked the gang members where their encounter with the ghost happened when we were chatting earlier. I'll take you there. Good. Please lead the way. Let's go find out what's going on. This is the place. They claim that as they passed through here, the area suddenly grew dark, and some ghostly flames appeared out of nowhere. Huh. What a coincidence. We saw the very same thing! Let's start by taking a look around the area, just as we did before. I found some sort of smashed ball under the tree. The inside of it looks like it was blackened by smoke, and it smells like fireworks. Judging from the burn marks left on the scene, the ghostly flames you saw were not created by yokai power. Rather, they appear to have been caused by something flammable. I'm not sure what, though. There's some strange powder in the cracks of these stones. I picked some up and sniffed it to see what it is, and it made me really dizzy. Ugh. I'm so tired now. Hmm. Similar scare tactics. And she didn't have the time to completely hide the traces. I believe we're closing in on the truth now. I'm almost certain that the woman you encountered was not a ghost. She possesses no extraordinary powers. She was merely scaring people with some small props she had set up ahead of time. Some small props? But can you really do all that with just some props? What we saw was absolutely terrifying. First and foremost, the test of courage contributed to the unsettling atmosphere here. You were initially frightened by your first encounter with these three yokai, and then shortly after, you ran into the mysterious woman. It was natural for you to be on edge. Because you were already tensed up, you were breathing more rapidly and inhaled a lot of sleeping powder that she had sprinkled around the area. That is what caused you to feel dizzy. That's when she pulled down the shade cloth and lit those so-called ghostly flames, creating a terrifying scene. That's the most likely explanation, anyway. So, it was all just a show? Uh, she tricked us! There is, however, still one loose end. The person who commissioned my investigation did become stranded on the beach as a result of some unusual power. That couldn't have been accomplished by just a few small props. 
But if she possesses such powers, why bother with the theatrics? Oh, Paimon can't wrap her head around all this. Hmm. She can only use props to scare people in the forest, but she can use strange powers on the beach. Huh, I see. I think I've figured it out. Whoa, that was fast. If we rule out the potential of organized crime, then only one possibility remains. I know who the woman is. Let's go to the beach. We'll come along too. No. You should go back and tell the others not to be afraid and not waste their time searching the forest. The truth has surfaced. It's time to put an end to all the unnecessary panic and await the outcome of the test of courage. Okay, but please be careful. If you run into any danger, simply call out our names. We'll be able to hear you. There shouldn't be any danger now, but thank you anyway. Let's go. Let's search along the cliffs, huh? If I'm not mistaken, there should be a chunk of earth that's unlike the others. Our bond is strong! Come find me here. There she is. Haima thought you were a yokai like the others, but they said they'd never seen you before. So, who are you? And why did you try to scare us? <sighs> I have already warned you never to speak to me. If you don't leave now, then... Don't move. Just trust me. Your yokai power won't scare us. It will only hasten your demise. Yokai power? Huh? How did you know? Your yokai that emerged from an object and assumed a human form outside of your own body. When this type of yokai is close to its own body, it can use some yokai power, but that ability weakens as it moves further away. And if the original body is destroyed, then the yokai that originated from it will likewise perish. Should I refer to you as a Hogoita spirit or Tsukumogami? Don't bother. You may call me Hanyuda Chizuru. That is the name I go by now. Chizuru? Why do you want us to leave? If you're a yokai, you should understand why the other yokai want to interact with humans. Besides, we had a great time playing Akitsu Yugen together, didn't we? Just like the story of Kamai and the samurai. Yes. That's why. That's why I don't want you to be sad, too. Sad? What do you mean? I'm sure the yokai have already told you of the story about Kamai befriending the samurai. But they don't actually know the entire story. The samurai was about 25 years old when they met at the festival. They met again 10 years later and remained friends. They spent time together drinking, traveling, and sparring. When they had first met, they merely respected each other. But ten years later, they became best friends. After another decade, the samurai had reached the pinnacle of his swordsmanship and won their duel by a narrow margin. 
Kamai was so astonished by his defeat, he gave up drinking and began training to become stronger for their next duel. However, another ten years later, Kamai did not meet the samurai. As it turned out, war had broken out in the south, and the samurai had gone to defend the border. Kamai was unconcerned, because ten years was nothing in a yokai's lifetime. But when they met once again, Kamai discovered that the samurai was already 65 years old. He couldn't believe his eyes when he saw the samurai's gray hair and scars covering his body. Hey, old friend. Can you still wield the sword? I'm getting too old to fight. This time, I've come to say goodbye. I see. Then, how about one last game of Akitsu Hazara? <sighs> All right. The samurai gave his best effort during the game, but had to quit halfway through because he was too weak. After putting down his agoita, Kamai remained silent for a long time before letting out a long sigh. <sighs> what a shame. Their friendship started as something they looked forward to, and in just a few decades it turned into regret. Lord Kamai's appearance hadn't changed, but his dear friend in front of him had grown old. The joys of friendship gradually gave way to the pain of regret. People often say that those outside the situation can see things more clearly. And I learned a harsh truth after witnessing all of it. Everything that people come to regret is inevitably set in motion from the beginning. We yokai are different from humans. We have longer lifespans and different natures, but we share the same world. We interact with one another. We are drawn to one another and will eventually part ways. When the dream ends, all that is left are sorrowful memories and lingering pain. Even a wise and seasoned yokai like Kamai felt sadness when it was time to say goodbye. Imagine what a pure and kind little yokai would feel. Oh. So, you mean... I was hiding on this beach, waiting for the last of my days. But those three yokai came and set up the Akitsu Yugen here, which woke me from my slumber. I didn't want them to approach humans with unbridled optimism and enthusiasm just because they'd heard the legend of Kamai and the Samurai. That would simply be repeating the same mistake. Is that why you pretended to be a ghost? To scare all the people away from here? Oh, so you must be the one who trapped that guy on the beach. That was a little bit harsh, don't you think? My power has become pretty weak now. And most of the time I just use some props I've collected to scare people. I can't show myself when there are a lot of people around. But that jerk was greedy. He wanted to steal the decorations from Akitsu Yugen and sell them for a profit. That's why I used my yokai power. To teach him a lesson. Ah, so that's what happened. You have a strong sense of justice. By the way, how did you know the rest of the story about Kamai and the Samurai? <sighs> it's okay if you don't want to tell us. I've already figured it out. Your true form is this pair of Hagoita, isn't it? Hagoita? Oh, wait! So that means she's... The pair of Hagoita used by Kamai and the human samurai to play Akitsu Hazura hundreds of years ago. You gradually developed sentience after being influenced by great yokai power. You were the closest to witness their story. Even with the yokai power's blessing, the Hagoita have started to rot away after hundreds of years. You can't sustain yourself, 
so you were forced to rely on props to scare people. And if my theory is correct, this pair of Hagoita is also the item we need to find for the third round of the Test of Courage. Excellent work. You figured it all out. Congratulations, little ones. You've passed the third round of the Test of Courage. Miko! And the Shrine Maiden? Paimon thought you went missing! I apologize for causing you concern. It was actually Lady Yai's idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, what did you think? Were you scared? Because fear is induced by uncertainty, the more chaotic the situation, the better. Having the event staff also mysteriously vanish only added to the uncertainty. I must say, I think this test of courage truly lived up to its name. So you're the one responsible for all the scary stuff! Hitomi, go tell the others that the test of courage has ended and that we have a winner. Now that I've solved the mystery, I'm going back to meet with my client. The intent to steal is not exactly a serious crime, but it can't go unpunished. I'll see you two later. Miko, did you choose the Hagoita for the third round of the Test of Courage because you already knew about Chizuru? Miko, Lady Yai, you're... I followed Kitsune Saigu around the Mikawa Flower Festival one year, and saw her play Akitsu Hazura. That was when I saw you. You didn't have a human form at the time, and possessed only the earliest traces of sentience. I remember now. You were on Kitsune Saigu's shoulder. I went for a stroll on the beach some time ago and sensed a familiar yokai power. Though your power was weak, I was still able to find you. You were sitting in a tree, gazing at the tourists below. I overheard you telling yourself that you must be patient and avoid contact with humans. Huh? When was that? I didn't notice you at all. With your powers being so diminished, it was only natural that you didn't notice me. You must have been blaming yourself all this time. You knew Kamai and the Samurai became friends as a result of Akitsu Hazura, a game connected to your existence. At the time, I couldn't take on a human form like this. I had only a hazy sense of the outer world. After they first met at the Mikawa Flower Festival, I felt proud to know that I had left a mark on their story. But after they said their final goodbyes, I could often hear Kamai sighing to himself. I couldn't help but hide, because I blamed myself. When I woke up again, the world had changed. Lady Yai, you are a well-known yokai. You must know many more things than I do. So I have a question for you. People meet, become friends, and then go their separate ways. After such a short time, they leave only regret and sadness in their wake. Is it really worthwhile for us yokai to interact with humans? Why not? Tell me, how did you feel when you played Akitsu Yugen with the Traveler? I... felt happy, but... Hmm, but your rationality told you that it was wrong, didn't it? It turns out that there is still another piece to the story of Kamai and the Samurai that you are missing. What do you mean? The Samurai and Kamai never met again. True, but the story doesn't end there. That Samurai's name was Yanagibashi Takuto, who also happens to be the founder of the Soran Ishin art. It is believed that Takuto developed this style of swordsmanship while dueling with Kamai, who had also befriended the third-generation heir of the Soran Ishin art, Tominaga Masanari. Five hundred years ago, Kamai and Tominaga fought side by side until their final moments, and the sword Tominaga wielded was passed down from Yanagibashi. The regret Kamai once felt had finally been resolved. 
Oh. I never knew. We yokai are not like humans. Humans have too short a lifespan, and the day will inevitably come when we must say goodbye. However, the bond formed by friendship will not be broken, but rather carried on in a new form. There's no reason to be upset by this. Time flies by in an instant, and life passes by like a dream. So, you must be happy in the present. You should understand what I mean now. Hey, compadres! Ito! What are you doing here? <laughs> Hitomi told me everything. And I also heard that you won the last round. I even know who the ghost lady is now. Anyway, I had a little discussion with the others, and, uh... Hey, you're that fox lady. Why are you here? <laughs> Please just disregard my presence. Now, tell us what you discussed. Ah, right. <clears throat> Alright, listen up. To celebrate the end of the Test of Courage event, we will be holding the Mikawa Flower Festival! I gave it some real thought and realized that it might be kind of difficult for those little yokai to hold the festival on their own. But with my help, it won't be a problem. That's right. Arataki, the one and only Ito, will be in charge of organizing the best Mikawa flower festival anyone's ever seen. Hooray for Ito! Oh. Uh... Can we really trust this guy with a festival? Hey, what you trying to say? Besides, it won't just be me. Other people will help too. Even my bro Ayato is gonna be there. Everyone's busy getting ready and the festival will be up and running in no time. It won't be long until you can all join the fun. <laughs> You're the best, Ito! And what would a festival be without me? I'll be sure to go have a look, too. Ah, it has been some time since I've attended a festival. Fortunately, I brought sake with me. Paimon's got to admit, Ito does have his moments. A festival, delicious food, count Paimon in! Uh... All right, I'll join. If you don't mind, that is. Looks like the festival has started! Let's go check it out! Oh, I was just saying that if I had more time, I'd have built a massive fishing pond here. Fishing? You know, when I lived on Watatsumi Island, I used to just dive into the sea and catch fish with my bare hands. <laughs> Take it from an expert, using your hands to catch fish is nowhere near as fun as using a fishing rod. Just the other day, I caught a fish so big that I didn't even know how to handle it. I even wrote a letter to Yai Publishing House about it. That's an unusual problem to have. Huh? A big fish? How come you didn't tell us? Paimon could have helped you eat it! Huh? You wrote a letter to Yai Publishing House? Oh, you bet I did! I wrote to the That's Life column and asked Miss Hina for advice. Ah, she's so amazing. She got back to me really quickly, too. Huh, what a coincidence. I do some part-time work there, and I recently received a similar letter. You mean the letter was about dealing with a giant fish they caught? No. Could it be? Could it be that there's someone as good at fishing as I am? Oh, not on my watch. Hey, you all go enjoy the festival. I'm gonna get out there and catch an even bigger fish. 
Just you wait. I'll be inviting you all to my fish feast. <laughs> Aw, the string snapped. I was so close. Yoimiya, this is more difficult than it looks. Can you really fish out these water balloons with a string? Don't worry. Let me show you a little trick. Just remember that your hand has to be quick. Yo, yo, Tsuri! I might see this game in some light novels before. Do you want to give a shot? Close one eye, aim carefully, and fish it out quickly. Oh, it looks kind of tricky. Paimon will let the Traveler try. You have to catch at least three water balloons since there's three of us. Uh, but Yoimiya, if I close one eye, I won't be able to see anything. Feels like it's been ages since the last time I had some. Hmm? You mean you don't get to eat ramen very often, Ayaka? But it's so delicious! Oh, it's you. We'll need two more bowls of ramen, please. Food like ramen and hot pot tend to have a lot of oil and salt, so I don't get to eat them very often. Oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah, now Paimon totally gets why Ayaka would put cake in the hot pot. Huh? Oh, uh, please, no need to bring that up again. Phew, I'm stuffed and feeling a little sleepy. <sighs> I'm just gonna take a nap. By the way, were there any special stalls at yokai festivals in the past? Yes, but, well, it's a long story. Paimon can't believe you couldn't get a single water balloon. You've gotten rusty. Chizuru managed to finally get one and gave it to Hitotsume Kozo. He looked like he really wanted it. But Paimon wanted one, too. All right. Then I'll catch one for you next time. Yay! Come on now. This is way more expensive than usual. Even if it is a festival, you shouldn't hike up the prices this much. Hey, now. It costs money to run a stall. I need to raise my prices to help cover the expenses, you know? Uh, fair enough. How about five masks for 30% off? Final offer. All right, all right. Uh, it's so hot. Feels like I'm being roasted here. Don't get too close. It's better to keep a few steps back. I know. It's just so rare to see such a nice bonfire. I want to get as close as I can to enjoy it. There are many beautiful things in the world. There's no need to be anxious. The festival has only just begun. I was surprised that you didn't even tell your sister. It seems she was quite frightened, too. It would have been uninteresting had I told her what was going to happen ahead of time. Besides, with her friends by her side, she wouldn't ever be too scared. Having a little fright is good to release any tension she might have accumulated lately. <laughs> Everything went according to plan. People started to panic as soon as they sensed that they had no idea what was happening. Oh, how amusing. <laughs> yes, well done. Hey, you two! Stop laughing! It was scary! Hmm? Have you finished exploring the festival? Well then, are you having a good time? Yeah, it's great! The original Mikawa Flower Festival was much more lively. But even if you could attend the original, you probably wouldn't be as happy as you are now. 
Because it's always more fun to enjoy a festival with friends, isn't it? Yes. Thank you. Well then, I'm guessing you have something you want to say to him alone? We'll leave you in peace. Hmm? What did you want to say to us? Ah, you saw through me again. I can't help but feel you somehow know everything. It's not that I know everything. It's just that I've been in your position before. <sighs> Traveler, do you have a moment? I'd like to talk to you. Alone on the beach. Alright, here will do. Thank you for agreeing to come with me. Actually, I was delighted when I first discovered that I could take on a human form. I was a yokai derived from a pair of Hagoita who came into being in the middle of a festival. So naturally, I enjoyed the lively festival atmosphere. I wanted to go to more festivals, become friends with humans, and play Akitsu Yugen with them. But every evening, as night began to set in, I recall the bitter smile of the old samurai as he set down the Hagoita, and the lonely Kamai sighing as he drank his sake. Then I would wonder, if I became friends with a human, would that person experience the same melancholy in the future? As a result, I was convinced that I couldn't do it. I told myself I would not repeat that same mistake. I'm sorry that I spoke so strangely when we first met. I'm sure it must have scared you. I expected you to flee in terror. But when we met again, you acted like you had no trouble being around me. I knew you mistook me as one of the yokai, but instead of telling you the truth, I went and played Akitsu Yugen with you. Hmm. I'm not completely sure myself. Perhaps it's because I've always wanted to be like Kamai and play Akitsu Yugen with humans. Or. Perhaps it was because I knew I didn't have much time left, and I didn't want to be alone. Anyway, thank you for taking the time to play with me. When we played Akitsu Yugen, Paimon said the loser would have to grant the winner a wish. At the time, I wished for us to never cross paths again. However, you still came and found me. Meaning, you never granted my wish. So, can I make another wish? Let me think. I wish for you to remember me. Uh, no. I only have one wish, so I better make it count. Okay. Listen carefully. My wish is... I wish that every day of your journey ahead will be filled with joy, like a festival.
just let me know if you ever find yourself in a pinch. I can help you out. <laughs> 